spent a lot of time on the music. It's just not monochromatic like a, a rock band or a straight head jazz band. Really, it's the mix of things that he brings to the music. <laughs> My name is Reza Khan. Bill Donnelly, drums. Great to him back on the bass. So Great to bass player. Hi, uh, Brian Taylor, guitar. Still wanting to for the keys. Just what again? Tom Morrison, left tackle. This music, this style of music, the genre. Well, being born in Bangladesh and grew up in a family of musicians, you know, we kind of like locked up. And my dad, when I was six years old, learning how to play percussion in the beginning and learning really serious classical Indian music. And then, you know, back in 72, or 74, I'm not so sure, my brother brought this album of Peter Frampton, Frampton Comes Alive. All of a sudden, hey, wake up. You know, there is another kind of music that I could actually get my head into. So, uh, you know, while the discipline of writing music, you know, in, in Indian classical format was great you know, for for, for the for the sake of music, but then we bring in this Frampton kind of sound, and then slowly I got inspired into the early days of Pantene sound, and voila, that was just an eye opener for me. And then from that point on, I decided to write music um, that would be part Western, you know, part in the Indian, part world. I mean, that's how I evolved. So whenever I write music. You, you, cannot, you, you can't just box me in, you can't, can't call it jazz, can't, can't call it fusion, it's a mixture of everything. That's how I pretty much started. I was at an Islanders hockey game and I got a call on a Tuesday night asking if I could do a video shoot for this guitarist whose second record was coming out. And, uh, and that was the end of the week. So they sent me the, the music and uh, I went on to uh, his website and kind of looked at him and realized that, that there was something there. Um, the record had been done by uh, Graham Hawthorne, who's a great New York drummer. And, uh, and so I spent about two days trying to write the charts and learn the music so that when I did the video session, I'd do a good job. And, uh, and then see where it went. So um, we did that and uh, we kind of hit it off. Uh, we went to dinner after that and uh, you know had a, had a nice meal, had some wine, and started to realize that here was this guy who was born the same year that I was born. Uh, our, our personal lives had been very similar. Our family lives were similar. We both, I think, we were talking about the earliest records that we listened to and really liked, and it turned out we both listened to Peter Frampton Comes Alive when we were like eight years old and said, I want to be a musician. And we had all this stuff in common, but he grew up in Bangladesh and I grew up in New York. So how we wound up in the same place was amazing. So, uh, so we hit it off and uh, he asked me if I would you know, play in the band and I said, sure. As a drummer, I, I love rhythm, but I really love good melody and harmony. And what I noticed uh, about his music was that there was it's melody rich. There's, there's a lot of nice things going on. They're very singable, they're very pleasant. Um, it has an intricate rhythm 
underpinning and um, and the form of the music can be very different. Uh, he'll write things that are more a function of phrase than a function of form. So where some of the songs might be in typical eight measure phrases, others aren't. They could be in nine measures, seven measures, seven. Weird stuff that we have to try and keep track of, but uh, but it also keeps us on our toes and, uh, and it really challenges us to try to make that stuff flow. The new CD, I think, is a very good example of where I want to be at this very, very moment in time because if I compare against what I did the first one, the first one is really very really personal. I just want to get a CD out of everything about a state of mind, where we are in this world, where are we going next. But this CD is all about maturity, musicality in terms of you know jazz, a mixture of fusion, a mixture of like maturity. So if I have to say one word, I'm walking my dreams. You know, and, uh, literally, I mean, I, I reached a point of maturity where I feel very proud on this city. Ah, oh, it's, it's just the music, the influences, the, the different kind of influences you have here. I mean, we have, you know, shred guitar with a blues feel, with an Indian feel on top of it, and then a Brazilian undercurrent and all these different types of tunes. It just was something that I've always wanted to play. It's just not monochromatic like a, a rock band or a straight ahead jazz band. It has so many different influences in it that it's just, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Well, right away I found something different about his music. Uh, the way it was structured by songs was, wasn't a traditional format in terms of how the measures work and so forth. And you know, he was able to highlight different instruments, whether it be sax, whether it be piano, drums, you know, everyone got their turn, and which was really nice and different about the music. As well as the, um, of course, his influence of, you know, uh, the Eastern world. <laughs> well, I was never trained by anybody, so, and that's why I think, you know, we all laugh at rehearsal time when, you know, our friends are telling me, like Brian tells me, oh, this was D minor 9. I said, what the heck is D minor 9? I can only, you know, translate sound and, and decompose sound into a chord. So my approach to guitar playing, I, I, I like choral chords, I like open chords, and I like alternate tunings, and I really would like to find a nice balance between the Indian classical nostalgic pre-John McLaughlin kind of sound combined with Pat Metheny and like a mishmash of everything. But something that is unique and something that is not heard by anybody else. So that's what I'm trying to get to. Developing a style which is uniquely different. You know, when I uh, first heard what Reza was putting together on his own, a couple things really attracted me. One, it's really accessible. You know, people can hear it and like it and they don't need to know all the history that goes into it. But it's also got great history. A lot of styles. There's a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, uh, rhythms and a lot of different uh, uh, you know, influences from around the world that he brings in. It's just it's very interesting music that's still very accessible. Well, it's quality music, uh, well written, beautifully recorded and played. But really, it's the mix of things that he brings to the music, uh, the rhythmic and cultural styles that all kind of swirl around in there. And I've never really it worked with anybody who particularly brought those Eastern styles into the Latin styles at the same time. Um, so that just knocked me out about it. It just felt so cool and, you know, I think, you know, as Tom said before, accessible, but still different than anything I had heard before. I think there was this uh, review on my Facebook page in Spanish and this is this city is one of, this probably one of the best cities of 2013 in Spanish. So I need to Google Translate it to figure out what it means. But you know, coming from somebody in Argentina posting this is great. I mean, I, the feedbacks are so far is great. It's in the Billboard charts. It's being played in the radio station. I think sitting in chart in top 20 across all the greatest players. You know, from Chuck Loeb to Andy Snizzer to. You know, any well-known, well-established jazz musicians out there, you know, sitting right next to them in the charts, uh, I think it's, it's an absolute delight.